This is John Zerzan reading a statement by anarchist prisoner Sean Swain. April 28th marked the 23rd anniversary of my arrest. It's my 8,168th day of continuous captivity for a crime I probably did not commit. My case. Back in 1991, I shared an apartment with Diane Cisneros and her two children from prior relationships. Andrew Crouch was the father of one of them. Crouch had previously lit Diane's hair on fire and kicked her downstairs while she was pregnant. He got away with that and more because his aunt Colette Crouch was the clerk of courts. On April 2nd, Diane argued with Crouch over the phone about visitation and she told him she was taking the kids and leaving the apartment. They wouldn't be there if he showed up. Crouch later arrived at the apartment in a car without a car seat for his infant son. He clearly saw that my car was gone, so he knew Diane and the kids were not there. Also, he had a stomach full of alcohol, so unless he planned to toss his infant son in the trunk and swerve down the highway, he wasn't there to pick up children he knew were not there. Police later claimed he didn't break into my apartment. Police photos of the shredded door frame, the deadbolt plate ripped loose from the screws, door shrapnel strewn all over the floor and a boot print visible on the outside of the door didn't surface until four years later. After he kicked in my door, Crouch yelled that he would blow my head off and reached behind his back. In a panic, I stabbed him several times. Police claimed he was not armed, but they also said there was no break-in. He was the nephew of the clerk of courts. They life-flighted his dead body three counties away. Dr. Elizabeth Blaraki testified that I ambushed Crouch from behind until another coroner looked over the case and threatened to expose her fraud. And then she admitted we faced one another the whole time, just as I had always said. Diane Cisnero said I wrote a book about how to kill people and that she disposed of my grenade in the lake. Police had my writings and no such book existed. They sent div divers down for a grenade and found hubcaps and beer cans, but that didn't stop Diane from testifying. A year to the day after my false conviction, Diane Cisneros lit her mom's house on fire while her mom slept in a back room. She said demons made her do it and she never spent a day in prison. So if you want to learn a get rich scheme, develop a dead body or hear a weird take on Jesus, get with Demon Diane on Facebook, but keep her away from the gasoline and matches while you're sleeping. But the most crucial testimony came from Amy Peters, who said she saw Crouch arrive at my apartment at a time when other witnesses who knew him placed Crouch at least 10 minutes away from my apartment. Amy claimed she saw a shadowy figure in an upstairs window lure Crouch up to the apartment and the 20 minutes passed before the ambulance arrived. Remember the state said I was a murderous lunatic. Demon Diane said so. The state said I lured Crouch to the apartment to pick up his kids without a car seat in his car. They said there was no break-in since cops concealed photos proving otherwise. And they said I ambushed Crouch from behind until the coroner got caught lying. So with the 20 minute gap that Amy Peters had counted, the state said I lured Crouch to the apartment and kept him bleeding for 20 minutes before calling for help. Two problems here. First, Amy could see around buildings and into dark second story buildings through insulation, plastic and rain condensation and, according to her testimony, through closed curtains and blinds. Amy Peters didn't see anything in any window, even if it had happened and it didn't. Second, Crouch had alcohol in his stomach, but not in his bloodstream, which means he died within five minutes of drinking that alcohol. Experts said so. That means we have to discount Amy Peters' 20-minute window unless we believe that 15 minutes after being fatally stabbed, Crouch laid on my floor washing down what appears to be a burger and fries with a bottle of liquor. I think it goes without saying that didn't happen. Five minutes before he died, Crouch slugged down alcohol. He arrived at my apartment without a car seat because he wasn't picking up his infant son. 
As withheld police photos show, he left a boot print on my door and wood fragments on my floor. We were face to face and I stabbed him in a panic. I called for help immediately. Self-defense, not murder. That was 23 years ago. I've been held 8,168 consecutive days and counting. For more about my case and my struggle for freedom, go to seanswain.org or free Sean Swain on Facebook or email me at 243205sean at gmail.com. This is John Zerzen reading a statement for anarchist prisoner Sean Swain at Ohio Supermax facility. If you can't hear the sound of Sean's voice, you are the resistance. You can write to Sean Swain at Sean Swain number 243-205 OSP 878 Coitsville Hubbard Road, Youngstown, Ohio 44505. To read some of Sean's writings and learn more about his case, check out seanswain.org.